scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The Word of God has the power to save. The power to save. The power to save. We'll touch on maybe three. There are five in all, but let's see walk with time the power to save first peter chapter 1 and verse 23 the word of god can bring salvation it says being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which liveth and abideth forever the word of god is able to bring salvation we are born of the word the word is the seed that brought us into this life that we enjoy today. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. And that from a child, he says, Thou hast known the Holy Scripture, and that this Scripture has the ability to make you wise to the end that you experience salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Salvation is a form of deliverance, the highest form of deliverance, the ability to be translated from one realm to the other. The Bible says the word of God sustains that much power to translate a man. Isn't it marvelous, my brothers and my sisters, that a man can be wallowing in sin and a life of confusion and purposelessness. And whilst that person is sitting, hearing you talk, as the word of God is coming, something begins to happen to that man. And literally, there is a translation. Two years after that encounter, that man is now a pastor. Someone who was once an arm robber. Someone who was once a whatever it is. Look the book of Acts and see how people who one moment were something else, but when the word of God came, it just changed them. The word of God is able to save to the uttermost. The word of God turned a murderer called Saul to Paul. The word of God turned all kinds of people. The jailer who was a wicked man in Acts chapter 12, I believe, The Bible says how that, no, 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 not Paul and Silas now, not just Peter. The story of Paul and Silas. The jailer was about to kill himself. And he said, no, don't touch yourself, we are safe. And he said, what should I do? And that man, that same man took them to his house. Look at what the word of God can do. Salvation. Someone who was flogging people on account of the gospel. Moments later, is now cleaning their bodies and saying, I'm sorry. I did not even know what, come on, what came on me. Salvation. No matter how hardened a man is, when the word of God comes, it is able to save. Not save from sin alone. It can save from many things. The word of God is able to save. Is able to to bring any and all forms of salvation to the life of an individual. James 1.18 Is God helping us this morning? James chapter 1 please and verse 18 Of his own will he begat us 
with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. He used the word of God and fertilized the womb that brought us as new creations in Christ. The Bible says we are born of the word of truth. Born again, not by seed corruptible, but incorruptible by the word of God that lives and abides forever. So the word of God contains the power to create. The word of God contains the power to save. Number three, the word of God contains the power to impart faith. The word of God contains the power to impart faith. This is very important. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. The power to impart faith. So then, this mystery we call faith, by which the just lives by, it says the just shall live by faith. And that faith comes. So faith is like a messenger that comes. It can come to you. And the agency that brings it is hearing and hearing by the word of God faith what is faith let me define for you what faith is faith is the conviction you have the name given to the conviction you have about god and the integrity of his person and then the corresponding action of obedience that you take to commit god as touching his promises is called faith the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of his person. Not the believing. The believing is not faith. It is the action you take based on the believing that is called faith. The action of obedience to honor the conviction that you have about God and the integrity of his person. The Bible calls it faith. The word of God is able to impart faith. Until the word comes, there is nothing to believe. Faith. Acts chapter 14 and verse 9. The word of God sustaining the ability to impart faith. This was Paul speaking. Watch this now. Whilst Paul was speaking, there was a man who was lame. And the Bible says the same heart. Everybody say he heard. He had the word. Paul was speaking. And whilst he was hearing faith. Was building. Growing in him. Who steadfastly beholding him. And perceiving. That now on account of what he was hearing. He now had faith. To be healed. Faith to be blessed. Faith to be lifted. There was something Paul was saying and the man was listening. Like you are listening to me now. And I'm telling you that God is able to turn a man's life around. God is able to lift a man and you are saying this is true. I'm showing you scripture after scripture. And the Holy Ghost is breathing upon what I'm saying. And doubt and fear is being shaken out of your life. I know this is true. There is no other way to obtain Bible faith you cannot get faith from a newspaper you cannot get faith from a magazine except if the information there comes from the Word of God the Word of God is the official and only platform to impart Bible faith Are we together? They looked unto him and they were not ashamed. Their faces lightened. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Lord, we look to Yahweh, 
Yahweh Forever Yahweh Yahweh Let me tell you this You will never be able to do exploits in this kingdom Until there is faith Genuine Bible faith There are no guarantees in life by default Nobody has kept any guarantee for anybody There is no guarantee that you will succeed there is no guarantee that your helper will be alive at the time you need him. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. It says, therefore, holding forth the shield of faith. Where which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts. Not so. Faith is powerful. There is no arsenal fashion that faith is not able to resist. The word of God can impart faith. So I open my Bible. And I'm trusting God to lift me. And I begin to read. And I'm seeing people who were ordinary but were lifted by the word of God. The word of the Lord came to them and lifted them. Some doubted that word and perished like the foolish man in Samaria. If God will open this window, is it true that by this time tomorrow this would happen? He saw it and he did not enter. The Bible gives us a warning that we should not be like them which perish in the wilderness. That today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart as they did in the wilderness. Faith can bring you to your Sabbath. There remained a rest for the people of God. Financial Sabbath. Sabbath, Sabbath in your health. The word of God can impart faith. Therein lies our confidence in this kingdom. We know that tomorrow is guaranteed because the word has gone ahead. We know our lives are blessed because the word of God has gone ahead. I'm seeing like fire coming on that lady wearing yellow. I just saw something look like oil and fire coming upon her. And the Lord is saying he's lifting you and your family. That lady there, I release that grace upon you. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. Faith. Listen, listen. This morning, I want you to shake away unbelief. And believe God. Lord, you are able. I may come from a background where no one knows me. But time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. Hebrews 11 and verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. He calls it the evidence, the evidence, the proof that the things that you do not see are there. He says, by this mystery, elders obtain good reports. Through faith, verse 3 says, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. Then he begins to list all of these people. Ordinary people. God calls an idol worshiper called Abraham in awe of the Chaldeans. Abraham, come. I want to make you a father of many nations. And the man foolishly followed. Who are you following? A voice, an idol worshiper. And if you follow me, I will make you a great nation. I will make your name great. I 
I will bless those who bless you, curse him that curses you. And if you trust me enough in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Abraham said, let's go. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm blind enough to follow you. There are no guarantees anywhere. It is faith that becomes that invisible ladder you keep climbing. It looks like you will fall, but after 30 years, you are still standing because faith is solid. Apostle God is calling me into ministry and he's told me I will go around the world with the gospel. I just need some uncle to give me a guarantee that if it does not work, they will help me build my church. You are joking. No. The word of God becomes that anchor. The Lord told me he will lift me from my lowly estate and I will fund the gospel across nations. As it is now, I do not even know how it will happen. Mary said, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. Faith. I believe God. It takes faith to believe God. Why will I stand and risk my life and risk my reputation and tell you there's somebody who is going to shout here. What if it doesn't happen? How are you sure you are not lying? <laughs> you see, when you walk with God, as your faith begins to grow, it becomes trust. Faith is based on the word of God. Trust is faith that has history back in it that means you have walked with God and even though you still trust his word but now there is an antecedence I believed him yesterday it worked I believed him last week it worked when David stood before Goliath, it was not just faith as we know, it was trust. He says, the God who delivered me, he reached down to his archives and said, he has done it. It has happened. That's why it's important to archive your testimonies. Because days will come, you will need to reach down and say, in 1997, God of heaven, you took me from and you brought me here. 2000, when it looked like I would not survive, this happened. No, this uh, before you finish testifying the mountain that stands before you has deflated many times we forget what he did yesterday that's why what he wants to do looks big if you remember how he did what he did yesterday you will know they looked unto him their faces were lightened are we blessed the word of God can impart faith you know that the faith of God has entered you when you are ready to take actions of obedience. God tells you, for instance, it is time to build a house. And you say, but all I have is 100,000 home and abroad. You tell an architect to work out something and he tells you, say for instance, you need 15, 20, 50 million. And you laugh at yourself. You laugh at what you are writing. You will never build that house. If you think he will just come by. saving money no the signs follow you have to take a step they go after you they don't go before you when you hear the word of God and there is a word for you that gives you an assurance you can go and buy one tipper of sand pour it on that land and leave it there and say Lord I have started I've committed you there are two names you are called Alpha Omega I have made you Alpha you must be Omega finish I have started it already there is no going back suddenly someone calls you and says I hear you want to build I may not have much but send me your account one million and God says start buying the zinc and keep and say zinc Lord we are talking blocks he said trust me the day you stand for that dedication while others are dancing you are crying be magnified oh Lord mine no one was educated around his nuclear family and he kept having dreams and he saw that he was going to become a great person and he said well I come from a background where no one really would have the ability to educate me but I will take responsibility eventually one thing led to the other made his papers wrote jam and he got um, a score that would probably 
give him admission. He kept praying and fasting, praying and fasting. Eventually, when the admission came to his shock, it was not the course he wanted, but at least they gave him admission. It was a miracle. The first person to ever have the potential of getting into a high institution of learning. Yet, no money, no nothing. When he told his loved ones, they said, look, forget about it, please. Don't bring any pressure on the family. We're trying to leave. And this gentleman, he was inspired in church and he got up, carried a Ghana must go, put whatever clothes he had and said, I'm, I'm returning back to this house, a graduate. All I need is transport to leave this house. How are you going to survive? You are crazy. You don't know what. <clears throat> Just put something for me. Even if it means to borrow, I promise you that I will return with interest. I'm going. That's fate. This gentleman left. And I remember he came into the high institution of learning. Shocked. Not even knowing where he was going to pass the night. No friend. No nothing. But the world was ahead of him. I will never forget the day that gentleman called me and said, Sir, I'm holding in my hands. My degree. Faith always delivers. The rest is history. Go and ask him how he ate. Go and ask him how He went. Do you know, eventually he became an ESCO in a fellowship on the campus there. Helped others know Jesus Christ. Lifted others. Enjoyed scholarships. Finished with honor. But if he did not take that step, maybe God is speaking to someone. You've been saying one One day go better. It's time to get up and shake that unbelief and say look I take responsibility you are 30 years 35 years you are still in your father's house and let me just see how the permutations work hey get up get up find scripture and get up and say it's time to be responsible I hope you still love me the word of God contains power. Listen, behind the exploits of men and women in this kingdom, I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few fathers of faith in this nation and you cannot tell the level of palpable faith that lives in these people. When they talk, you need faith to hear them, not to believe, to hear. Because what they will tell you, you can even be angry as you leave. And, and that is their normal, their default state of speaking. You can build your faith as you encounter the word. That is why when you don't pay attention to the word, your faith cannot grow. Are we together now? Yes. You must obtain grace. I remember many years ago, I used to stay in one small room. And from that room, I kept having visions of the globe, visions of nations, visions of kings, visions of territories. And the Lord told me, this is where I'm taking you to. Right from that room, I believed him. Right from that room, notebooks after notebooks, I kept writing. When people are sleeping in the night, I'm awake, preparing because he told me this is where we are going. And today, let the Lord be magnified. That is all that I can say. You have done me well, you have done me well, you have done me well, Jesus. You have done me well, you have done me well, you have done me well. That will be your song at the other side of your obedience. You have done me well. 
you have done me well you have done me well Jesus you have done me well you have done me well you have done me well faith that comes by the word while people are laughing at you while people are concluding about you can anything good come out of nazareth you are there believing his word lord this ministry you have called me into i believe that i'm a blessing i may not know and have all it takes now listen to me my dear people let me speak to you there may be a few of you here that have the call of god upon your life do not let anyone despise your gift learn with honor grow with honor be mentored with honor but know that the only limit to your life is the limit you place through unbelief are we together there is nothing i cannot believe god for today i have seen his hand the word of god sustaining the ability to impart faith are we still here number four the word of god has the power to transform the word of god has the power to transform transformation is the name given to the process that makes you like christ in experience transformation the word of god has the power transform to transform means to change states to transform means to change levels God's servant Bishop David Oedipo calls it next levels is a grace that can move you thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph so that the version of you that was there yesterday is not the same one again that you will meet why seekest the living among the dead transformation first peter chapter 2 and verse 2 please write it down first peter chapter 2 and verse 2 shela bakaruski atabalada as newborn babes he says desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby that means as a new believer in christ naive ignorant not knowing anything about the faith life i can begin to engage god's word and from a new believer you come back and meet a matured believer look what the word of god did to the disciples come follow me he says and i will make you and they came as naive fishermen tax collectors all sorts of people and through three years of intensive word mentorship alongside the holy spirit he called them these are they that turn the world upside down transformation by the power of the word by the power of the word are we together transformation by the power of the word first peter chapter one when you read from verse two down to four it says grace and peace be multiplied are we still together first second peter i meant to say second peter chapter one from verse two second peter chapter one grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge 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 the knowledge of god and of jesus our lord so grace can be multiplied peace can be multiplied next verse it says according as his divine power hath given to us all things that pertain unto life and godliness again through knowledge the knowledge of him the word 
that has called us into glory and virtue. Verse 4 says, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The word of God. Able to translate you, transform you from a lower version of yourself to a more superior version. John 15 and verse 3. The word of God is able to clean and purify. It says, ye are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. No matter how you come, the filthiness of the mind, all kinds of wrong ideas, cultural ideas that are wrong, religious ideas that are wrong, all kinds of ideas that come from our African context that impede and limits people. The word of God is able to clean a man to a point where you become transformed, a superior version of yourself. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2 says, I beseech thee, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye offer your bodies unto God a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He calls it your reasonable act of worship or service. Then verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. Is the Greek word aeon, the thinking pattern that comes with this age. Do not be conformed, but be ye transformed like they teach in primary science that an insect can go through the egg then the lava see remember then pooper then adult man can change states in life intellectually man can change states in life spiritually man can change states in life financially that the level that you were by January or by June, by the time you enter the ember month, you have changed. The world is a ladder. You can climb it and it can elevate you to realms and dimensions that were previously not captured in your experience. May the word of God change us in the name of Jesus Christ. The power to create the power to save the power to impart faith the power to transform can I add one more the word of God has the power to heal and to deliver Psalms 107 from verse 19 Psalms 107 from verse 19 they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he saves them out of their distress next verse he sent his word and his word he led them and delivered them not just out of demons alone but out of destruction Deliverance is not just separating you and a spirit alone. It's separating you from a limiting obstacle. You can be delivered from things. The word of God is able to heal. I know this from scripture. I know this from the testimony of my own life. I know this by the privilege of ministry it is true that the word heals I am the Lord that he led thee I am the Lord your healer You sent your word and it healed my disease. Mm. 
sing it one more time personalize it now you are the lord that he led me you are the lord my healer you sent your word you sent your word and he healed my disease you are the lord my healer can we try one more time with understanding you are the lord that he Your word, and it healed my, my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. In John chapter eleven. Jesus tells his disciples, Lazarus sleepeth. Let's go and wake him. And the disciples said, no, 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 no. He's not been feeling fine. If he's sleeping, then he's good for his health. He said, no, he's gone. When they got there, Mary and Martha began to cry. Where have you been? He says, don't worry. I'm the resurrection and the life. He said, I know. You've taught us that already. But he says, even now, roll away the stone. When they rolled the stone, the word from this earth realm issued a command, Lazarus. If he did not call a name, every dead person would have come back to life. He had to choose the one because the word of God was going to enter the realm of the spirit and select. I want to do this just for your glory. If he said, come forth, rapture would have happened immediately. The word. He said, Lazarus. And the word entered the realm of the spirit. Searching dead bodies and found him and said, the master is calling you back. If the word of God can bring a dead body back. A dead finance. Dead relationships. All you need to do is to name it. It's a risk to just say, I want change. No. Lazarus come forth he said and he that was dead he came out in grave clothes I want you to believe what I'm saying the word of God truly has power come forth for someone you are saying it's too late apostle you don't know what has happened in my life ah the miracle of the raising of the dead was to show you that things can be restored they are taken for a prey and none saith not thinketh saith restore some of you as I'm talking you are just remembering things that have left your life I lost money I lost people now where will my help come from the word of God has power to heal not just heal your body it can heal your mind a broken spirit can dry up the bones this is the reason why a sick body watch this someone can come on a crutch or on a wheelchair or be blind and deaf and while the service is happening the person is still sitting there in fact even when the preacher is preaching the man is still there faith is being lifted and then the word of god comes stand and someone who for 25 years 15 years Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. 
I say, is my son. Attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.